Okay, folks, here we go. Uh, let's see, let's get to 15.9. Uh, let's see. Uh, Marty's Barber Shop has one barber. Customers have an arrival rate of 2.2 customers per hour, and haircuts are given with a service rate of five per hour. Use the Poisson Arrivals and Exponential Service Times model to answer the following questions. So this one, again, and what I've tried to do here as I tee up these problems for this week is I've tried to choose problems with a little different uh, question uh, question basis here. This one is effectively asking you uh, about the number of uh, patrons in the system. Now, what does the system mean? The system is comprised of, for instance, if you go to the grocery store, you're in the system if you're either waiting in line or you're at the checkout counter. So the system is is the uh, it considers both pieces. Uh, of whatever waiting line you happen to be in. And so the first, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four questions effectively are asking you, what is the probability of uh, no units in the system, uh, one unit, two unit, three unit? Uh, let's see, for, uh, let's see, for these first four problems, I've computed the probabilities down here. And I have used uh, equation number seven. And again, this is equation 1510 out of, uh, out of the chapter, again, which aligns to the questions in A through D, the probability of N units in the system. So N in our case will be zero, one, two, and three. And that is, uh, let's see the notation here, just to make sure that we're clear. And I've uh, listed up here, Lambda, again, is the number of arrivals, in this case, per hour, so 2.2 per hour. And then, uh, let's see, uh, the average time that it takes uh, to get a haircut is five minutes. Hopefully, you don't have a lot of hair if you go to Marty's, right? Uh, Marty's, yeah, Marty's Barbershop. So, uh, the probability of N units in the system, Lambda divided by U raised to the N power, times P0. What is P0? P0 is the probability that no units are in the system. So that one's computed fairly easily. I have that have done that for you here. 1 minus 2.2 uh, divided by 5. Make sure you put that in parentheses when you, when you compute that. It's just like order of operations with anything else. And again, I'll give you this sheet so that you've, uh, that you've got these computations. Then for probability of 1, 2, and 3, uh, again, I have uh, I have the computations or I have the formulas shown here in the respective cells. And again, just remember that I am following for B, C, and D. I am following uh, equation number seven. Uh, let's see uh, what is the probability that more than two customers are waiting. This is very similar to. Um, what we did on uh, the last part of 15.5. Again, I'm just taking one minus the probability of zero, one, and two in the system. And the complement to that is about 0.1936. Again, you can see that formula, but again, the, uh, the idea is just taking the complement to that. Uh, what is the average time a customer waits for service? The average wait time, You'll see here that I have used equation four that I believe I showed uh, from problem 15.5. I just copied these over. So once you compute the average number of units in the waiting line, you can divide that by lambda, and then you will have uh, then you will have uh, the answer to F. What is the average time a customer waits for service? Again, uh, when you go through your homework. Make sure that you first look at uh, any of these questions that are related to time and make sure that your Q or that your Q parameters here, lambda and mu, are given in hours. Otherwise, you'll, uh, you'll be talking apples and oranges here and uh, you'll have some grief with that. Uh, let's see, did we answer everything there? I think we did. Again, just as a reminder, uh, make sure that, uh, or again, yeah, I mean, certainly you can build your own spreadsheets for these if you want to do that. I'm just offering mine up for anybody who uh, just wants to confirm the syntax in Excel 
if that's at all helpful. All right, so uh, one more to go. So let's get to the big bruiser here. This is a this is a good question, and you're going to notice I've got a little something hanging in the uh, hanging in the waiting room over here, and I think you're going to find this to be uh, very helpful. Uh, let's see. Remember, I said up front uh, what where there, there's uh, three three things that we really need to know about a queue in order to analyze it. We need to know the arrival rate of subjects into the queue, the service rate, how many, you know, how many typically can be serviced in an hour. And then also we are gonna wanna know, uh, is there, if there's more than one server uh, for a certain line, then we're gonna want to know that because that's gonna play, uh, or, or it's gonna play into the calculations uh, for your queue characteristics that we're discussing in all these formulas. So uh, let's see, Burger Dome sells hamburgers, cheeseburgers, french fries, soft drinks, they sell all kinds of stuff. Let's see, uh, let's see. The arrival rate is 45 customers per hour and one customer is processed per minute. So effectively here, uh, and I'm, this is all in minutes. So notice uh, I've, I've got a, I've got a little chart over here. Let me, let me just hold off on that. I don't think we need to get to that yet. I don't wanna confuse you. Let's talk about the questions first. It says, compare a multiple server waiting line system with a shared queue to a multiple server waiting line with a dedicated with a dedicated queue for each server. So there's two things that we're gonna look at here. This last one is a little easier. Uh, you've got multiple lines uh, with a server for each. This first one is saying, uh, let's say that I have just one line uh, but I have multiple servers, and I believe the number of servers is two. So yeah, suppose Burger Dome establishes two servers, but arranges the restaurant layout so that an arriving customer must decide which server's queue to join. So that is the effectively the dedicated. Assume that this system equally splits the customer arrivals so that each customer, or sorry, each server sees half of the customers. How does this system compare with a two server waiting line system with a shared queue. So there's, there's uh, let's see, there's four questions for each queue and then we're gonna compare the service. So where this problem differs a little bit uh, from, uh, let's see, 15, let me just remind myself here real quick. Yes, from 15.5, remember in 15.5, we only had one desk. What we've got here in this shared single queue is we've got one line and we've got two servers. So the computations are far more complicated for this than they were in 15.5. And uh, let me just show you here. This is out of, uh, let's see, section 15.3, as I recall. I will just, you know, you can look at some of these monster sorts of equations that you need to have in order to compute these Q characteristics. Uh, and there's additionally some over here as well. So what I have done is I have, uh, I'm gonna, I will add this and uh, you know, there's other, other spreadsheets out there that will do this as well. But there's a file called q.xls. Let me just kind of give you a quick overview here. Uh, from reading the book, when you see something like MMS, this is uh, what's, been, what's referred to as Kendall notation. Uh, it, again, the, the, the M uh, Markov processes, uh, number of arrivals, service rate, and then number of services. Uh, let me, again, before I get to that, let me, uh, let's, I, I probably should have done this in this order first. So let me, let me pull back or pull the curtain closed again and let me go over here and talk about what I've done. Uh, so based on the fact that uh, as I as you look at this problem, and I, I know this is algorithmic, but I know everybody's gonna be responding to this in minutes, uh, make sure that your uh, arrival and service rates are in uh, number per minute. And so for the uh, single server line, uh, remember, we get one every uh, or 45 per hour, so that's 0.75 per minute. And then where you have the two separate queues, we'll split that in half. So the arrival rate there is uh, going to be 0.375. Uh, the arrival uh, or the, the service rate, 
doesn't change across the two queues. It's uh, one per minute. Let me, that should be one also. I don't know why I put a 60 there, but let me just put a one there. So the, uh, again, arrival rates for the single queue with multiple servers, 0.75 per minute with a mean uh, service rate of one per minute. And then where you have the two separate queues, again, we just take that arrival rate, split it in half, so 0 0.375, because half will go to one line, half will go to the other, and then uh, one, per, uh, one per minute. So let me say this, uh, for, this for this beast over here, uh, the calculations I said uh, get really complicated. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get our friend here, q.xls, and uh, you are welcome to use this if you like, or you can build your own spreadsheet if you are an Excel guru, whichever one you like. If you go to the tab labeled MMS, uh, if I can enter my arrival rate, my service rate, and number of servers, it's going to split, spit out all kinds of great things for me here. And if I recall, let's see, let's make sure I get this right. So the arrival rate is 0.75 per minute. The service rate is one per minute. And the number of servers, remember I have one line, but I have two folks that are uh, that are servicing that line. So I'm gonna say my number of servers is two. And then when I hit enter, I get all of these great Q characteristics that will align with what you're looking for over here. So I don't need to, I don't need to regurgitate those to you, but this is how, when, I, when you look at these numbers, this is how I got those numbers and again, it saves you a lot of time uh, trying to come up with these calculations uh, in Excel. Uh, as I go over to, uh, let's see, as you translate from the single server queue to the dedicated queue, uh, let's see, what happens there? Uh, the, probably the best way to look at that uh, is if we looked at a single server queue with arrival rate of 0.375, a C, let's see, service rate of one. And these are the characteristics if you have just one server. And so I will leave this with you all to figure out how did I go from uh, these numbers to these numbers? Why did these, or how did, I, how did I extrapolate from one to two based on this outcome? So I hope this is helpful, folks. Uh, this is a really interesting, uh, very interesting uh, topic. And I know that it's very computational. So I hope uh, setting these up gives you an understanding. And then Q.xls is helpful on this last one. So take care and let's have a great week.